Okay. Um, can you hear me from the back? Thank you. Uh, uh, first, uh, I want to thank the organizer uh, to invite me here. <coughs> it's a great pleasure um, to come here and uh, share with you about some of our, of our recent uh, work. Um, a droplet, uh, why a droplet can contact a smooth surface so rapidly. Um, so I like uh, the last two uh, talks. So they talk about the amazing things on the textured surface. Uh, so here uh, we only uh, talk about the simplest case, uh, smooth, uh, uh, flat, uh, atomically smooth. Um, and uh, so uh, I'll uh, mention to you how a droplet can uh, make contact with the smooth surface. Uh, this work is mostly done by uh, my postdoc, uh, Hao Yunlou and Yuan Liu. Uh, I'm from the Chinese U of Hong Kong. Sorry. Um, so, um, so this is a very uh, simple case. Um, so think about this uh, very straightforward case. Uh, you have a droplet. Um, if you drop it uh, to a smooth surface from a very low height, actually, just above a few centimeters uh, and higher. And when you drop it, um, it will trap a very thin layer of air at the beginning. Um, it does not contact immediately. And it takes time for the air gap to drain out, okay? Because this here, there is a very thin layer of air trapped in between. Okay, you cannot see it. It's about a micron size. And when this gap becomes thinner and thinner, it will become harder and harder to drain away because of uh, this drag becomes uh, uh, rapidly increasing as you decrease the thickness. And how much, how long will this air gap to drain out? It's a very classical question. Just apply the lubrication and you calculate from this. Uh, this I copied from Landau's uh, fluid mechanics book. Uh, open up any book. Um, there's this very simple uh, delta T drainage time, which is proportional to the size of the drop and the um, viscosity of air. It A is the viscosity of air and the driving force F. And in this case, driving force is gravity of the drop. Okay? This is very simple. And of course, it depends on the thickness of the gap, H1 and H2. So H1 is the initial thickness on the order of micro. H2 is the final thickness. You may think, well, naively, um, as I thought this beginning, at the beginning, uh, H2 should be zero. Then this whole time becomes infinity. Of course, that is not true. You always have a cutoff length. In this case, it is the um, uh, Vandewa force distance, okay, about 50 nanometers. Once you reach the Vandewa force thickness, then the top surface and bottom surface will attract each other and then collapse the film. Okay, so if you plug in uh, H2 as about 50 nanometer, H1 is about a few microns, which will be uh, negligible and you plug in all these parameters for a millimeter of size of the drop, you get 10 to 100 seconds. What do, you, what do I mean by 10 to 100 seconds? I put a drop 
here. I get a cup of tea, finish it, come back about a minute. The drop should be still here. How many of you have seen this in your life? Drink a cup of tea, drop is still there. Never happened. Never. Yeah, exactly. That's a great question. If the surface is smooth, what will, ha will happen? So that's a very good question because, yes. Are these Van der Waals forces attractive? Yeah. Not repulsive? No. Attractive. Okay. So the bottom surface so is wet. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. In our experiment, um, yeah, they are, they are attractive. And so that's a good question. What happens if there's no dust, nothing, to make the early contact? Okay, you may argue that, well, I see this very early to happen because my surface is not clean. There's always some dust, some uh, um, pillars uh, uh, make the early contact. So then I will do this very clean surface for you and let's see what happens. So in this case, to make sure the surface is very clean, I uh, coat a very thin layer of liquid, freshly coated, um, so make sure there's no dust. Um, and also I did experiment on a dry surface, a freshly peeled mica surface, um, very clean. Um, and this is the result. The left hand side and right hand side are almost the same condition except the left one is slightly inclined. So in this session, we heard lots of inclination angle. Here I have a, a pretty small inclination angle, 0.3 degrees. I drop a, a liquid drop on the smooth surface. You can see that in about 0.1 second, this contact happens. Okay, not 10 to 100 seconds, but 0.1 second in this one. But wait a minute, what is going on here? Does not contact for a much longer time. The only difference is that this one is flat. Okay, I tune this, actually my student, tune this uh, very, very carefully, completely horizontal, and then it can stay much longer. But trust me, I'm not showing a image. Uh, this is a movie. <laughs> <laughs> you will see in the end, um, it will happen, okay? Eventually it happens. Um, so from the experimental result on a very smooth surface, I get 0.1 to 1 second. Okay, if I'm lucky, I have one second. If I'm not, in most of the cases, actually 99%, you do not have uh, inclination angle smaller than 0.3 degrees, so you always have something like 0.1 second, yes. So this is clean, right? Yeah, clean, clean, yeah. Freshly prepared. We only do that right after we prepare the surface. Yeah. Um, so, if you, Remember last slide, I say from the estimation, it's uh, 10 to 100 seconds. Here, I only have 0.1 to 1 second. Uh, the discrepancy can be two orders or even more. Okay. So uh, in this talk, I'm going to mainly address this question. Why there is this? Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, actually, uh, yeah, that's a good observation. Um, actually, this is not the final stage. I just stop. So this is because of the slight asymmetry. So it's uh, uh, eventually it will uh, spread and make a coating. But this is, when I stop it, it looks uh, asymmetric. Okay, it's not the final state. It's not the final state. So eventually it will uh, spread. So uh, this is due to some, some uh, asymmetric initial condition. Um, okay, so that's the main, uh, main issue. Um, so here, uh, very similar to Dan, uh, we use a, 
uh, this uh, uh, microscope to observe the interference. Uh, and uh, my student used two wavelengths uh, to measure it more accurately. So with this, you can actually get the accuracy about uh, 30 nanometers uh, used using two wavelengths. Okay, from one wavelength, um, um, you can have something like a, a half micron or, or better than that. But two wavelengths, it's much better. And from that, we can get the profile of the air gap. Um, so I'll show you first what it looks like uh, from the bottom view. Uh, this is uh, that short lifetime situation, the inclined surface. Um, you will see that the drop hits, and then you can see that becomes asymmetric, and the center of the drop, that blue dot, moves, okay, moves rapidly, okay, along a straight line. Okay, that line is the inclination. Okay, even though there's this 0.3 degree, it always it can already feel it because there is air, nothing in between. So the friction is essentially negligible. So it can move along the straight line, along the inclination. Sorry? Yes, yeah. Uh, actually, it ruptures from the edge first and then spread. Uh, so let me show you uh, one more time. So you can see that it is moving. And then you can see ruptures from the front and then uh, spread. I will show you more later. Um, so um, as I mentioned, uh, we did lots of experiments uh, to make sure that uh, we get the general picture. Uh, so here we uh, vary the uh, inclination angle and we found that there are only two states. Okay, only two states. One is this long lifetime one. The other one is the short lifetime one. Nothing in between. Okay, there is nothing in between. Um, these field symbols are the ones on a wet surface. Okay, on a wet surface. Um, and these open symbols are the ones on the dry surface, the dry mica surface. And uh, this one is the blow up of uh, this, uh, this short lifetime situation, okay? Uh, one thing we notice is that um, there is no long lifetime situation for the dry surface, okay? For the dry surface. It only happens on the wet surface. And I will explain you more about this. So, so there are only two states, and I will uh, discuss these two one by one. So first, starting from the short lifetime case first. So from the short lifetime, you can see that the um, drop is moving. So this red dot is the initial contact, and it will move along a straight line uh, toward the, red, uh, the blue dot, and then making a contact. And you can see that the contact is made in the front side of this drop, okay, of the trajectory, which means um, it's asymmetric. The front side must be thinner than the back side. Um, and indeed, if I use this uh, interference pattern to measure thickness, uh, it's indeed that case. So along this line, I measure this uh, uh, air gap thickness, you can see that while the back is very thick on the order of micron, the front is already reaching a very, very thin uh, thickness on the order of uh, um, below 100 nano. And so this actually can explain why you have a very short uh, contact time because of the asymmetry, okay, symmetry breaking. So the previous estimation uh, People estimate, well, the thin film should be symmetric. Everything is the same. So, of course, uh, you need to drain out all the air uh, to make the contact. Here, actually, you do not need to drain out all the air. You only need to drain out uh, a little bit of air. There's still lots of air in the gap, but there is one point here already very dangerous. The dangerous, most dangerous point already reaches the critical thickness. And contact. So that's very early, and that's a very uh, straightforward. And even a very small inclination, like point some degrees, can already break this symmetry. So that's why 
in most of our uh, daily life experience, 99.9%, .9 it's this mechanism. Okay, so 0.1 uh, second or below, uh, you make contact. In the previous, what were the two white dots? Oh, sorry, that is just the initial contact point. Yeah, um, so I label this, uh, that's the initial contact point. Uh, they are symmetric along the uh, along this trajectory line. Okay. And if I reduce I reduce the inclination angle to something small but not zero, then these two dots, two initial contact will converge into one. But still, if you look at this uh, uh, profile, it's still asymmetric. The back is still much thicker than the front. So the difference could be um, factor of five or uh, even as large as 10. Okay. Um, now, if I come to the symmetric situation, this one, zero uh, inclination. And now you have a, I have a very different uh, picture. It's totally symmetric, totally symmetric. And in this case, it has to drain and then um, uh, eventually um, reach um, everywhere at the parameter need to reach about the same thickness. And then it can be contact. That takes much longer time. Um, Oh, it missed this movie. Um, okay, so this is the movie for a long lifetime um, interference pattern. Okay, for the long lifetime, you can see that the pattern is symmetric. Okay, and if I look at this dot, that's the center, does not move. Okay, it's very static, unlike the last time. It is moving along a straight line. So this case, you can see that very stable. And the pattern is symmetric. Okay. So this is actually the same movie, uh, the same experiment as the one I showed you for the side view. So this is the bottom view. You can see that although from the side view, it looks very static, almost like an image, actually from the bottom, something is actively going on, okay? The air is draining, um, the pattern is changing, um, so it's, it's dynamic, okay? It's dynamic. And eventually, the whole thing becomes uh, very thin, air gap, and then make contact, okay? So this, of course, takes much longer time because it's now symmetric. Uh, nature cannot use asymmetry to break uh, this uh, air film. Uh, trivially, now it takes much more work, okay? Um, so that's for the uh, symmetric situation. So as I told you before, um, on a dry surface, we do not see this long lifetime. We only see this on a wet surface. So why is that? So no matter how hard my postdoc and student chew in the surface, uh, the dry surface never happens. Um, so therefore, it must uh, relate it to the surface, okay, the surface. So we uh, track the deformation of the surface uh, on this wet surface for both short lifetime and long lifetime case. This is for the short lifetime. So we use, uh, my student actually invented this uh, confocal scanning, uh, fast scanning confocal uh, method. Uh, it fixed the confocal microscope scanning the surface uh, all the time. And then from careful calibration, you can actually track the bottom surface deformation uh, on the order of micron uh, size. And then you can see that uh, this at zero time, this is flat. And as time goes, the center sinks the edge rises and the sink 
can reach about uh, minus eight microns. So that's kind of shallow. So therefore, uh, this very shallow, uh, shallow uh, uh, indentation, uh, so it cannot stop the inclination, uh, uh, the uh, slipping, so uh, it still moves. However, if I go to this long lifetime case, because the drop stays in the same position, so it keeps sinking, sinking, sinking. So here I go out of my um, resolution, uh, my measurement range, so I tune the focal plane to a lower place, and then you can see that it can reach something like minus 25 microns, okay, very deep. So this mechanism is actually very um, straightforward. Just imagine uh, my hand is the uh, surface, the bottom surface, and then as time goes, it becomes something like a trap. And then imagine my head is the drop, so it actually like a situation like this. So my, my uh, droplet is trapped by this surface indentation, cannot move. And then it's stable, and then um, stay in this position, uh, symmetric. It takes a long time to drain, so this cannot skip. Um, yes, I, yes, because for the um, short lifetime one, we see the indentation is always very shallow, uh, below 10 micron. But for this one, uh, we always measure this indentation uh, on the order of uh, more than 25 micron, something like that. So it's a much stronger trap. And then also we see the drop cannot move in this case. Also because now it's very flat, very flat, so uh, uh, the uh, external perturbation is very small, so it cannot drive it to overcome this trap. Um, for the previous case, then that small inclination can drive it out of the trap. So this is on this liquid film. You have this indentation and you trap your drop. But if you have a dry surface, of course you do not have an indentation. And then um, it's always flat. You do not have trap. So any small perturbation from outside will always break uh, this uh, symmetry and make the drop to move along a certain direction. Matter whatever noise, there is always some noise. Then it will move and then break the symmetry. So on the dry surface, we never see this symmetric situation. Always asymmetric. So that's the reason, uh, because there's no, this, no protection. Okay. Um, however, I have not explained to you why um, it's still too short from experiment compared with the estimate. Okay. So I explained to you there are two mechanisms. However, even the longer one is still too short okay, compared with the estimation. So what is going on here? Why? Why? Uh, this two to three, two orders of uh, discrepancy has not been explained. Um, so, so we have to try to explain this. Uh, so why it's so rapid, uh, even for the symmetric case. So without asymmetry, now it's always symmetric. We have to carefully think about the previous model. Uh, so previous model, very straightforward, fixed boundary condition, and this velocity uh, profile is uh, parabola, okay, very uh, straightforward, poised will flow, okay. Um, however, we think that in our case, in this case, the liquid drop, this surface is mobile, okay, and the bottom film, it's liquid, okay, there could be flow. If there were flow at the bound, in the liquid, in the liquid, then that will produce some moving boundary, and if this moving boundary can superimpose with this, and we get a much faster drainage. Okay? So of course, this requires experimental verification. And so we do experiment. So this is that very static drop I show you before, except here I put tracer particles. So these bright spots are the tracer particles to track. Uh, whether 
there is flow inside. Uh, indeed, uh, although it looks very static, the drop, but if you look inside, there is actually active flow. And this flow actually has the correct direction. Okay? This flow must be going from the center toward the edge. Uh, only in that direction can help the air to drain. Otherwise, if it's reverse direction, then it will help the air to refill. That does not help. So you have to have the correct direction. And this is indeed in that direction. Sorry. Yes. But this flow is, so to speak, external, or is it driven by the air itself? Ah, that's a very good question. Actually, we do not know the initial. We do not know where it comes from. Um, I uh, estimated the uh, uh, damping time from the viscosity, everything. Uh, so initially, because you have impact, there is some flow. But by this time, that flow sh should already uh, um, damp out. Um, so uh, actually, I do not have a good answer for your question. That is unknown. Maybe uh, the audience may help me uh, to figure this out. Uh, so we, we observe the flow, but the origin is unknown. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, so, so we also put more trace particles and we look from the below and track the velocity of these trace particles. Um, you can see there are some black dots uh, here um, and there are some bright spots here. So these black dots are the uh, trace particles on the bottom film, on the bottom liquid film. And these bright spots, because of the um, lightning, uh, they are the trace particles on the uh, droplet. Okay? So therefore, from one single experiment, I can actually measure the velocities uh, from both boundaries, bottom <coughs> and the top. Okay? Um, so you can see that as time goes, uh, they all move outward. Okay? They all move outward. And uh, if I do the particle tracking, uh, of course, uh, I can measure uh, the velocities at different radii, okay? Uh, you can see that the more I go out, uh, it becomes faster. Um, and uh, here are the data uh, we measured. Uh, so this, uh, this bottom curve is the um, velocity profile at the bottom boundary. And this dot one is the uh, velocity profile uh, for the top boundary. And uh, the middle one is the one uh, take average. That's the uh, overall effect of the boundary velocity from experiment. Come back to the question of David. Do yeah. you see any uh, change in time of this velocity field? Or? This velocity field? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, oh, uh, so here we measure this velocity field uh, with respect to time. So here is different time. Okay, so indeed, um, uh, the velocity, so here, if I show you, so this, this dot dash dot dash curve is the, that boundary velocity. So as time goes, this velocity becomes smaller and smaller. Is that your question? No. Uh, can you repeat? the flow was due to the initial impact the flow and it's staying equilibrium um, I, yeah, I, I, I mean, from the estimation, I estimated, because those are oil droplets. They are about 50 centistokes. So the damping time is actually pretty quick, uh, about 0.1 uh, something, below 0.1 second. Uh, here it's on the order of one second and more. So, yeah, so, you, so I uh, tend to believe it's not the, from the initial impact, um, yeah, but we can discuss more. Uh, yeah, that is unknown. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, so you can see that this, this uh, dash dot line is the boundary velocity, and this solid curve is the total drainage velocity measured from our air profile. Uh, variation because from the the air prof, uh, profile air gap profile uh, variation uh, also you assume the air is 
incompressible, in this case it is, then it's easy to calculate the velocity profile at different uh, radii. Uh, radius of the drop? So what are we looking at? Radius of the drop? Yeah. So is that the 300? Uh, yeah. The, the radius of drop is about 500. Yeah, so uh, here, around here, or even uh, further. Um, so, um, so you can see that the boundary velocity actually is very significant compared with the total. Uh, so even from early on, and it becomes more and more important at the end. So at the end, it's almost all from this boundary uh, effect, not from the, uh, uh, the Poiseuille flow. So that's why uh, in previous uh, estimation, uh, we always, uh, because we uh, have the wrong assumption, okay, we neglect the boundary flow, so we have a much longer uh, drainage time. Here, there's help from boundary, so it's much faster. And here is a, a quantitative check uh, for this new uh, model. Um, if we include the boundary velocity, and uh, we have these red dots, and the are consistent with the solid line, this solid line. So here, sorry, I did not explain. This force is the integration of the pressure uh, from the uh, bottom surface. And then, of course, it should be consistent with gravity of the drop. And you can see that from experiment, these are uh, indeed agree consistent with the solid line. That's the gravity of the drop. Uh, however, if you do not consider the boundary effect, uh, then these, uh, these previous methods overshoot this uh, uh, force by a large value. Um, so here, uh, that's the uh, uh, take home message that why this is so short uh, for this symmetric case, because there is a, another helper. Uh, so the boundary, boundary helps to uh, drain air much faster. So we have we should have this picture in mind when we consider the drainage, especially at the end, at the, the, the final stage of the drainage. Because in that case, because it's so thin, if you use the Poiseuille uh, flow uh, situation, the velocity is very, very small. The driving force is gravity, it's fixed. The gap is so thin, essentially there is no drainage. The only thing coming from the boundary Okay, so uh, let me summarize for you. Uh, so we found two mechanisms to speed up the contact. Uh, that why we see the contact so rapidly. Uh, first, asymmetry. That's actually 99.9% .9 of what we see. Uh, so if you are very careful, you can get rid of the asymmetry, then nature has another way, boundary flow, okay, to help this to speed up. Okay, thank you for your attention. Yes. There is somehow a strange coincidence because this argument of the reflow works for the field, mm -hmm. which gives you this uh, speed up. But if you do this back on the solid surface, you have also the same type of speed up, which, which is for different reasons because of the maybe some small completion of the, of the surface. That, that is the. That at the end, you get the same time, which is. That, yeah, that's a very good point. That is the experiment we are working on now a solid surface, but we make indentation on the solid surface. So it's already there and make it clean. So then there's no flow at the bottom. Uh, so will that happen? Uh, may, will that make the contact time long? May I, may I see this uh, very uh, uh, long time, like 10 seconds? One thing, um, there's always flow, I believe, in the droplet. So the droplet is liquid, it's mobile. So there's probably always flow there, but by reducing, uh, by making this bottom surface solid, uh, we probably can uh, elongate this uh, contact time. Yeah, that's a very good point. Actually, we tried something uh, with the viscosity, because if, imagine if you increase the viscosity, then that can slow down the uh, boundary velocity. Uh, essentially, it can increase the um, drainage time. Uh, that is true up to a point. Um, so we tried different viscosities, 10 centistokes, 50, 100, and uh, more. Um, below 100, um, this is going up. 
However, when you go to too high, then uh, it drops down. The reason is uh, because when it's too high, then it becomes asymmetric again because the viscosity is so high that it cannot adjust itself to make a symmetric drop. So it becomes, the drop is asymmetric, so asymmetry. So that's the reason. Yes, David. Did you also marry viscosity of air? Uh, no. Viscosity of air, no. Uh, Using, we, uh, yeah, I know. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's a very good point, yes. The, uh, I believe the kine kinematic viscosity, yeah, the dynamic viscosity, uh, yeah, can be varied, yes. If you vary the density of air, of the gas. Using other gases? Yeah, yeah, because I think the kinematic viscosity, I think the viscosity of air is, can only vary not too much. Yeah, I know. If you change the gas, you can you can vary uh, viscosity significantly. I I believe one, either kinematic or dynamic, one of them uh, does not vary too much viscosity. Uh, but I can check. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Can you explain the same confinement? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, um, I think on elastic membrane, it's still too stiff compared with the liquid. I think we, we did some experiment on PDMS, which is soft. Uh, it does not work. It does not work. So it's still too, too rigid so compared with the liquid surface. Yeah, um, actually, if you make it uh, very deep, then this path becomes longer and longer. And then, actually, it makes this uh, uh, drainage more difficult. Yeah, so, yeah, it can increase the contact time, yes, uh, if you make, make it deep. <laughs> 